Welcome to another broadcast of the Deborah Ruffini Show on the Artist First Radio Network. All past shows are archived. You can find them at artistfirst.com. And now, from England, here she is, your host, Deborah Ruffini. Greetings from England. Welcome to another broadcast of the Deborah Ruffini Show. Today, we shall be looking at Rosemary West. Rosemary West... Um, is a British serial killer who was convicted in 1995 of of 10 murders spanning between 1971 and 1987. She and husband Fred would typically pick up vulnerable young women from bus stops. Um, They were usually girls who wouldn't have been easily missed or traced, quite often runaways or from, um, you know, run away from children's homes. uh, And they would... uh, they would take them back to their home of 25 Cromwell Street, where they would sometimes offer them a job of nanny to look after their kids, sort of gaining their trust. You know, you should be able to trust a, a uh, harmless-looking middle-aged couple as, as they appeared. Lovely husband and wife, what could possibly go wrong? But don't be fooled by appearances. <clears throat> so they would take take these girls into, maybe after they'd offered them a nice cup of tea and you know, gained a little bit more trust, into like a dungeon they, they had in their the basement of their home, where these poor women would meet their horrific deaths, sometimes being hung up on a meat hook for days on end, usually decapitated, gagged, raped, more than often by Rose, which is um, strange. You don't often hear about women being rapists. Um, We don't tend to think of women being uh, holding such violent roles, but um, that's the myth, isn't it? Women always are fairer sex. We know that just isn't true. So, yeah, so this all hit the news in the early 90s, uh, and you were kind of just waiting to hear how many more bodies had been found at 25 Cromwell Street. It was a really, it was a, it was a shocking time for Britain. Never knowing, you know, how, how many more they they were just where was this going to stop? And uh, all these missing women around Gloucestershire. <clears throat> um, very very sad, very tragic time. So I took the plunge in attempting to make contact with Rose who is quite rightly serving a life sentence. This cold-blooded murderer has uh, carried out such horrific cruelty, yet she's allowed to receive fan mail. You did hear that right. She's, she, you know, it's just, uh, it, it's absolutely bizarre. Um, fan mail, greetings cards, anything of praise really, but she wasn't allowed to receive my letter. Uh, and it was a letter inviting her to take a look at my website, raising awareness of female to female abuse. So, so I received a reply from the prison governor, <clears throat> and here's how it reads: Dear Ms. Ruffini, thank you for your letter dated eighteenth of June regarding your request to correspond with Ms. West. I have read your letter and website flyer and considered your request. I am respectfully going to decline your request to write to Ms West. That's very sad, but there you go. Whilst your desire to help women subjected to abuse is admirable, and I hope goes a long way to providing the support you clearly felt was lacking in the system, I must consider the potential impact on a woman I have a duty of care over. Didn't know how I felt when I read that line. Anyway, Uh, the prison has various accredited and approved programmes to both manage risk provide support and address offending behaviour which are very stringently assessed and controlled by trained facilitators under strict supervision criteria. Thank you for your interest and I wish you every success in your venture to support other women. Right, so, uh, oh, poor poor Rose, you know, we can't have her made aware that a website exists um, bringing 
our attention to the seriousness of female to female abuse because it may cause her distress. But as long as we keep supplying her with her fan mail and cards of praise, you know, that's all good. Very sad. Very sad. Um, anyway, that's the way it goes. So, <clears throat> my guest today is the lovely Mike of the YouTube channel Bizarre Bizarre, who writes to the world's most notorious inmates, including Mrs. West. So, great to have you on with us, Mike. Thank you so much for being on the show. How are you doing? Oh, doing good, thanks. Yeah, uh, thanks for having me on as well. It's good to be here. Yeah, it's good to be uh, talking about these uh, subjects as well, some of these matters. Yeah, it's uh, it's a very important thing. It's something that people quite often don't want to think about, but it's, it's important to make, you know, the awareness of this awful stuff does go on. And, uh, yeah. You know, it's, uh... So, I'm intrigued. Tell us about your YouTube channel because it's, it's so, interesting, uh, it's unique. Yeah, so, yeah, thank you. I've, um, I started it about a year ago and I've just um, been writing to inmates. Uh, the reason, mm. the reason why I did it was because I was into um, serial killer documentaries. Yeah. Like, um, but kind of like, not just like the sort of gruesome stuff, but try to understand why these people did what they did. Yeah. And um, just like understanding you know, the, the psychology behind them. And then I kind of just got to the point where I'd watched, um, you know, lots of them for many years, and it kind of just felt like the same thing. And then I got into uh, serial killer interviews, because then you could read a lot more behind them. There wasn't, like, you know, so much editing that was changing the story, and it was, like, from the horse's mouth. Mm. But then I realized there was only, like, about 10, 15 of these that were, like, sort of in the public domain, so I decided to try and change it with a channel and start writing myself. Wow. That's pr- yeah, excellent. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that's what I've been doing. I really enjoy it, and um, yeah, it's just been it's been a journey so far. Just all the different people we speak to, and just like um, everything's like mm-hmm. a, an interesting thing people ask about the channel uh, is actually the inmates. Mm-hmm. You say what's what are the episodes like? How do you do them? And um, I just say to them, well, it depends on who you are because they're all based around the person and what they have to say and what they share, and that kind of. Some episodes are a bit funny, some episodes are extremely dark, some episodes are thought-provoking. It yeah. just depends on what they share and how they speak, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah, that is some... Um, and everyone's different, isn't it? I mean, I've se- I haven't seen more. I've got a lot to catch up on, but I'm, I'm finding it yeah. interesting. And Just like every person's different, you just all like, uh, want to share different things. Some people are just talking about, you know gruesome tales of prison and some people are talking about their favorite memories on the outside and what they wish they could do and just all of it kind of says something about them still even if it's indirect and that's what i find really interesting yeah wow that's brilliant so i first i came across your channel with um because i had written to uh rose west rosemary west and yeah um i think it was bef- um just before I'd, I'd been she does fascinate me She's a very, the fact that it's a woman for a start, a wife, a mother, you don't expect this from, you know, women are supposed yeah. to be our gentler sex, as I've mentioned before. Um, but I was, in, in just YouTubing that name, I came across your letter to Rosemary West, and I thought, oh, this yeah. is going to be interesting. So, um, yeah, tell us a bit, sorry, for a start, do you, do you, do you remember that time when it was all in the... Um, in the news and you, you never knew from one day to the next how many bodies more bodies they were going to discover and yeah so uh, I, I was a little bit young to actually remember the exact things that were happening at the time right but, um the name like uh, i'm from the uk and so like the name's just synonymous and mm. um there's actually there's actually like a, a phrase that kind of goes around like oh it's under the patio or I'll put you under the patio. Yeah. And it's kind of like used as like a jokey phrase now, which is quite uh, a dark thing to say, but it's kind of like, you know, like your uncle or something might say it, you know what I mean? Just some kind of joke. Yeah. But it comes from, obviously, Fred and Rose West with burying their children and victims under the patio and stuff. Oh. Well, they buried, no, they buried their daughter, didn't they, under the patio. Yeah. That's and that's just like a turn of phrase. But I, I love the generation that kind of grew up with that being part of the culture, if you know what I mean, became part of, you know, society in like a, in like a way like that yeah uh, but yeah That's... like as for um, writing to writing to Rose mm. um, someone I've really wanted to try and get in touch with but she's uh, she's very well protected because she's so vilified in this country um, mm. as she said before she's like a mother a wife and you know stereotypically supposed to be this nurturing character and you just yeah 
it's a lot rarer in women for these people to be so, you know, heinous. It, it's horrific, isn't it? I mean, that yeah, that was one of the things that kind of first intrigued me when all this came out, is that, you know, she looked like... Um, you know, the, there's big rimmed glasses, and she looked very motherly, uh, yeah. didn't she? And the, the cardigan and wearing the knee-high socks and the sensible shoes, and it's someone that really didn't look like... <laughs> far from looking like a serial killer, whatever a serial killer's supposed to look like, but it was just this very mumsy yeah. type figure and that's what grabbed my attention that how can someone who looks like that do all these awful things um yeah. i mean fred looked it's dreadful sorry we, sh- we shouldn't really be focusing on on how but we do sometimes judge by appearance and fred perhaps yeah. looked a bit you know well her, like manic. rose herself like when fred was trying to call her he was um he was much older he was like 27 and she was 15 Oh, and sense. she thought he was a tramp when they first met and uh, she hated how he appeared and she didn't find him attractive at all but it was because he was so persistent in uh, like wooing her yeah. that um, she even gave him the time of day and you know he started walking at home and stuff after like you know tra- kind of like almost you know pestering her for days and days if not weeks and she finally like you know gave in and started to get to know him a little bit more and that's how it all started yeah yeah it's um biggest mistake meeting someone like Fred and it does make you wonder how how influential some one other person can be to lead the yeah. other person on to doing things like that it's quite interesting isn't it the psychology of yeah how that may have happened you know was the other person would have to have a degree of evil in order to be led on of course um, yeah I think I think like both both parties have to have like I think I think a lot of people are very similar to them too but I think yeah. people like that have to meet each other for them to, like, um, sort of turn into what they were. Yeah. Um, but there again, a similar thing could be said about um, Ian Brady, you know what I mean, meeting, um, oh, what's she called? Oh, yeah, um, Myra Hindley. Myra Hindley, sorry, I couldn't think of a yeah. name. But, yeah, yeah, I think, like, a similar thing happened there as well because Myra and Rose were, like, I, I, they're both like damaged people from a young age like they, I think they were both abused as children yeah um, I think Rose was abused by her dad I think wasn't she so she had this kind yeah. of like part of her which was unfortunately damaged not saying that everyone turns out like that but she had like a, a darker side to her from a young age and then obviously Fred has like brought this out I think Ian did the same as well oh did it I worked the same way with those two yeah, yeah, because Myra Hindi was going to go into the um, convent, wasn't she? I think. Yeah, I and I just think like maybe if those people, like, I'm not saying they would have been, you know, well, well-adjusted, brilliant people, but maybe if uh, you know uh, they didn't meet those other like those partners, maybe it might have been very different for them. Maybe they wouldn't have, you know, pushed yeah. on with that side of who they were. Yeah, that's true. That's an interesting thought, isn't it? Because because she ended up blaming. Fred, didn't she, in the end? When, so basically, yeah. to, to the audience... Well, uh, yeah. the both of them blamed the other one, yeah, like, in terms of... Um, sorry, I mean, uh, Meyer as well blamed Ian, like, I'm sure they kind oh. of felt led by them because Fred and... I'm sorry, I keep talking about uh, them to Andy and Brady as well, by That's the way, but, um, yeah. but they were both, like, I feel they were both the, like, the people that pushed things to go further and further, but it's not to say yeah. that... Um, Myra or Rose were any kind of like you know resistance to it at all. They enjoyed what they were doing, obviously. Y- yes, that's true. That's absolutely horrific, isn't it? Yeah, but, um, and uh, Ro- Rose especially. Like, I mean, to be fair, they're they're all horrendous. But Rose, um, she was quite a sadist, wasn't she? She was uh, very dark sexually and yeah, had a, had a real dark side. As you said before, like if you've seen her on the outside, like just sat at a bus stop, yeah. you just think she was just some, you know typical woman who was just a casual working class lady but she had such a uh, she had like she created like torture devices and stuff like that for these people didn't she and she was she was well into it all it was quite yeah. scary yeah it was horrible wasn't it that, that there was um yeah like you say an element to her that was kind of worse than yeah fred and she did a lot of the raping as well from what i understand a lot of the abuse was carried out by rose on the, on the women yeah um and uh, it's just... Well, yeah. she was the one who um, killed... Was it Fred's daughter? I don't think it was Rose's daughter. Fred had a daughter beforehand. Oh, Charmaine, yeah. And um, 
that was the one that ended up under the patio, I think. She she girl, but she apparently she knocked on the door uh, of Fred's house and she was wearing this uh, the, the daughter's jumper, and yeah. then um, Fred just like looked at the jumper and like knew what had happened and just said, "Oh bloody hell!" and then just brought her in, and it was just that, and then they dealt with the body. But it was Rose it's... that did all that herself, so obviously no, there's no like denying that she's absolutely terrible but yes. on her own. Yes, that's that's interesting, isn't it? The in- Maybe that answers our question, you know, irrespective yeah. of Fred. It's that Rose was kind of... Well, the chances of two evil people coming together, it's, it's just, yeah. you know, absolutely unbelievable. But, yeah, she was very matter-of-fact about it, wasn't she? Was there, there was a story about Linda Goff's... Um, so Linda Goff was another... I think she was the first or second victim that wasn't a blood relation. Well, there, there was a situation with her item of clothing that the mother came to the door and yeah. said, yeah, where, where's Linda? And... Uh, Rose, I don't know who you're talking about. <laughs> and she's we- wearing something, her shoes or cardigan or something like that. And yeah, I think it was a cardigan or something, wasn't it? it. Insane. But yeah, I mean, going back to Heather, I think it was. She was just the, the excuse for oh, she was playing up. I, I, you know, cut her up and put her in the bin. Yeah. It's just oh, because she was playing up. That's, that's I suppose that's what we do. That's one way to get rid of the situation. Not we. I'm killing my daughter. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it's just... It just kind of, like, shows the mentality of the person, doesn't it? And just how they how they think. Yeah. Very, very scary. And um, But it took so long, didn't it? That's another interesting aspect of the story, that this came out about... I think it was about 94, 95, and, you know, the, the killings have been going on for... I think the first killing was 71. Yeah. And you think, how... There must have been so many missing women... The, yeah. So clever to sort of cover your, or even just luck of the draw. I don't know, but um, but they reckon there there's a lot more missing women that probably. You know, yeah, they had things. a they had that they had like a sex dungeon in the house, though, didn't they? Where like they had like a yeah. furnace and stuff, and they were able to, um, like destroy bodies down there, weren't they? Um, yeah. Uh, so I'm not saying like it's definite that they killed a lot more than what we know of, but uh, I think it's very likely that they did, as you say, because it's such a long period of time, and there's not like mm. an insane amount of victims that they sort of charged for, is there? But I don't think they'd have been having such long gaps in between. Yeah, that's yes, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. but um, it was very sad at the time. I was working, uh, I think I was working in a factory, and coming home and s- seeing the footage of these men carrying out the, the boxes of yeah. remains and uh, it just it's, imagine living next door to that and not the neighbours didn't have a clue what was going on I think they lived next door to a Seventh Day Adventist church yeah and um, it must have been absolutely mortifying to know that was going on yeah they were digging in the garden weren't they and just kept finding body after body yeah same to think and the kids were playing. That the kids were playing, sort of on top of that. That was their um, was their bedroom and their playroom. Yeah. Wasn't it that they were just? They had no idea. But um, yeah, it's very very sad. And when they, so I've read the book of um, May West, one of the the older. Because there was yeah they had like an older um, older children. Then there was like a, another generation of children, wasn't there? Because Rose was yeah. producing them quite often. Um, and I think it's in May's book that she that she said they were still her and Stephen the the, the other brother was they were still mortified at knowing that their mum and dad were killers they they wouldn't have been surprised if they were they knew they were a bit pervy and they knew there was sort of you know sex games yeah. and things going on in the dungeon but they were still very horrified Did, know, didn't they get like some of their kids involved sexually as well that are still alive today yeah. Um, I'm not too sure. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but I thought they, I think they maybe did, didn't they? Like, oh, was it? Yeah. They like, raped some of their own children, didn't they? I think. They did, Yeah, I think um, Anne Marie West was, I think yeah. she was the oldest. Um, possibly after Sharp. I'm just trying, I'm trying to think of the photo, actually. So they, she was one of the, yeah, one of the older children, the, the, the first lot. And yeah. they did some horrific things to her, sort of. Yeah, the, the two of the, the two of the most brutal um, serial killers that I think maybe the world's seen, but definitely uh, in Britain that we've seen. I know the yeah. um, the 
press were told that they couldn't report on it properly because it was too too extreme and we still don't know the oh. full extent of stuff today do we of what actually happened we just know like the sort of softer parts which is still so horrific yeah yeah that's true and i remember hearing sort of a few years later that um you've got a few films on ted bundy that i was looking on youtube you've got about five or six you know films on ted bundy but i remember um it being said at the time that even if you soften down the uh House of Horrors, it was called, wasn't it? The time yeah. The House of Horrors. That it would still be too horrific to make a film out yeah. of this because yeah. there's, you know, the things that just too. And there actually hasn't too... been one yet, yet still even today, has there? No, no, yeah. that's true. We've got one about Peter Sutcliffe, I think. So sorry, Peter Sutcliffe was the Yorkshire Ripper who was for the, for the audience. He was. Um... It's all that part of the country, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, no, it's the uh, like northwest, like slightly midlandy, but it's just that area, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it's got a uh, it's got a high tolerance of them. Um... I know uh, Fred West lived a lot in the northwest, up in the Lake District and stuff in his younger years. All oh, right. He actually, um, lived in one of my like places I grew up in as well, called Barrow. He lived in there for a little bit. And that's about as northwest as you can get, and then just worked his way down. Oh, okay. Yeah. Ah, well, that's interesting. Too close to home. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> what do you think, Mike? What do you think about? Um, no, again, sorry. Oh, sorry. Um, what What do you think about the motive behind both of our letters not being able to reach Rose? Have you had any ideas about why? Yeah. So yeah, uh, mine mine's a bit different to yours. Right. So yours was a lot more respectful and kind of giving you, um, like, uh, you know, like saying it was a, a good thing to do, but like, you know, obviously you don't think it's right. Mine simply mm. reads, um, please find the letter that you addressed to a prisoner enclosed, which I did get back. Yeah. Such unsolicited mail to any person will not be permitted. Please do not admit, uh, please do not attempt to make such contact again. Oh. And yours sincerely. Uh, so I felt like quite, uh, you know, I felt like oh. I got you know, going to get in trouble if I wrote again. Yeah. I haven't actually wrote back since, but like there was plenty more people to write to, so but I will try again one day. But they just keep us so... Um, That's interesting. ...locked up because, again, like I said before, she's so vilified, isn't she? But normally, like, you know, there's, there's other people that are so vilified where, you know, you can still get letters to them. Yeah. That's yeah, really yeah, strange. So I, find it a bit, I find it a bit of a struggle as to why. Uh, I, don't, mm. I don't know. Um... Yeah. I do think it's I do think it's interesting, but I know um, I know someone who worked as a prison guard. It's not it's not it's not like a massive story or anything, but she'll only eat hand cut hand cut chips, uh, right. and she's quite funny about what she eats. And um, obviously, she must get her own way if she's if she's allowed to have you know you think in prison you know, you get what you're given, but yeah. she's like oh I'll only have hand cut chips and she's she got it and um, she gets like Mother's Day cards off. Her fans as well, which is another bit oh. of a crazy one, as you mentioned before, about her other fans. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, just like, so, she's obviously... And I, that's another thing, why, why are we getting rejected? And yet people can send a Mother's Day card, like, obviously, a lot of them, which blatantly aren't a mother. Well, this is what... I, I actually feel quite strongly about this. That it's almost like, as long as we keep her praised, but, oh, don't, don't you mention anything about how naughty she's been, because it might yeah. upset her. Yeah, you should think that's how it is. Yeah, I, I'm not too. I, I suppose I I was trying to dig it in the bad side as well. No, I definitely was. Yeah, so I suppose yeah, that might be why we're both bad off. Yeah, but your your reply was a lot more. I think it was a lot more colder than, than the reply I got. But your letter was um, the letter that was on your YouTube clip was was really civil and polite and. Yeah, well, it wasn't. Um, I wasn't. You know, I wasn't. Yeah, just asking vulgar questions was I was just no. trying to sort of speak to the person about what they did and stuff but um, yeah, yeah obviously they don't want that don't they? they just want they would, it's almost as if they want that stuff to be locked away and forgotten about isn't it yeah that I, it's difficult because I, I can sort of get oh we, we need to no I don't get we need to protect her at all <laughs> I'm going to zip my mouth on what I feel about it um, but you can sort of see, right, okay, she's in our care and we have a duty to look after her and she's with us. But at the same time, I think what makes me very sad, I don't know if you feel the same way, Mike, is that she 
the last we knew, she showed no remorse. Yeah. Um, I was in brief contact with Caroline. So Caroline Roberts was, was she one of two survivors, I think? Yeah. Caroline was, yeah. Owens back. Then. Yeah. Um, and we, we had shared some emails um, shortly before her untimely passing. Um, so yeah, sorry, to, so to, to the audience, Ca Caroline was, uh, she was a young lady who, um, do you want to tell the story, Michael? Shall I just, just in brief, she... No, you go for it, yeah, definitely, I'm interested, okay. I didn't know you spoke to her directly. Yeah, she, she seemed very sweet, she was very lovely. Um, so she was sort of lured back, wasn't she? This was in the early 1973, yeah. I think. Um, there's so much to the story, I can't remember all the details. So, and there again, you know, oh, they're going to look after me. You know, mentioning to Caroline's mum and dad, oh, I met a lovely couple, they're going to look after me. And then they tried the same thing with it. And there was the, they picked her up in the car and Rose, had, they used to ask vulgar questions, didn't they? They'd start by asking vulgar, vulgar questions yeah. to their potential vi It'd victims. It would be Fred that would start it and then like Rose would come in, but Fred would kind of set the tone with the victims, wouldn't he? And yeah. Rape them and stuff like that first, and then Rose would come in as some kind of, sadist afterwards yeah sort of taking over wouldn't it it's, it's yeah over to her now yeah but yeah. um i think um, that, yeah but she, <clears throat> she kind of uh, didn't uh, didn't she kind of uh gain the trust and then got a bit of freedom and then like um managed to escape the house and then that's how it all came out was it her that did that yeah so she she went she went back with them i think and, and she um fred was uh have you, if you had sex, we'll, we'll take you home. If you had sex tonight, Caroline, and then have, have a feel, Rose, have a feel. I'm not going to do the accent because I'm <laughs> I'm rubbish with accents, and that'll be mocking the <laughs> mocking the accent. Um, and so I think Rose got in the back and tried to, you know, feel between her legs, and Caroline was naturally, you know, not too happy at this point. And yeah. then Fred punched her, and the next she knew she was unconscious back back at Cromwell Street, and they. Had tied her up and um, yeah, Rose had inserting things into her, and it's all. Yeah, I don't know if that was the same instance, but it, it sort of carried on. But she, they were very good at apologising as well, and oh, it won't happen the next time, you know. So yeah, they sort of you know that's that's how a charmer works, isn't it? Oh, they're full of apology. Oh, they they're not that bad, you know. So, yeah, um, just like sweet talking them back around, and yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I think Caroline sort of. Um, sorry, th this incident that I've just mentioned must have happened on the second time because it's that's when Ka it all went pear shaped. But I think she she did get away, and yeah. um, but she she was too fearful to give evidence because it was just think, to put into context as well. She's only like a teenager at this point as well as Caroline, isn't she? Yeah, she wasn't and very that's old. Just like, you know, imagine, and especially like in those days, just like I'm not saying teenagers are like any stronger now but they're a bit more savvy with the stuff like that whereas uh, I imagine they're a bit more innocent then as well it's just insane to think that she survived that it's brilliant yeah. strength of the woman it's amazing isn't it and yeah. and also I think the police didn't take her that seriously I think she went to the police but I think yeah I think initially she went to the police but they Fred and Rose were just fined with something like only a few pound it wasn't you know it wasn't very much yeah um, but then I think things were different back then as well, um, because she was almost accused of being, well, you are a bit of a party girl. Are you sure you didn't ask for it? It was that sort of attitude. And yeah, so I think course. that lost Caroline's trust in the police. Um, that, you know, anyone who may wear a bit of a short skirt or, you know, you've asked for it sort of thing. Um, yeah. Not saying that she did, but that's that sort of, I think it was that sort of attitude. So, yeah, I um, I'd made brief contact with Caroline and she was she was so forgiving Mike it was just unbelievable you know she I remember it with one of her one of her emails she said um and you could almost hear her accent coming through the way she wrote as well she said N none of us are perfect are we none of us here are perfect are we and I thought oh my goodness how can you say this again that's me being judgmental now but no it's right though isn't it yeah it is isn't it you sort of think how oh, my goodness what a strong woman to yeah. You've had all this done to your body. Your body is belongs to you, and they've just done this these awful things. Well, good for her, though, as well, because um, 
you know, she's willing to be so forgiving and hopefully she didn't live with much resentment, do you know what I mean? Because it would be, that's an easy thing to eat you up, isn't it, for the rest of your life? Yeah. So, very, really well yeah. done. Probably healing for, yeah, probably healing for her more than yeah, of course. a mixture of forgiveness and healing for... I just think I might be wrong as well. Um, I think she got away, didn't she? But they carried on afterwards because she wasn't believed, was she? she like you said, she was the party girl, wasn't she? Yeah. Well, not she wasn't, but that's how she was perceived, sorry, by the police. Yeah, I think... And so they carried on murdering after her, I think. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's one of her. that was one of her regrets that she took to the grave, that if only she'd yeah. sort of sprung into action and she could have saved a lot more lives, but, you know... I know, it's a it, shame, that, isn't it? It's just like, you know, you always want to almost rack her and say, no, it's not your fault, or, you know what I mean? It's obviously, you know what I mean, but... Yeah. I, I can see where, you know... I put that to her, and I, th I think a lot, you know, probably a, a thousand one people have put that to her, that you'd never... You can't say how the future would have been had you done or not done this. And yeah. Um, but it was... Um, but, yeah, I never heard from her again, and I had no idea she'd passed. I just thought, oh, she's probably you know, busy, but I didn't realise yeah. she had died. Um, How come you started speaking to her at that point? Was that were you wanting to write the rose beforehand, or? Um, this was a few years ago. Um, I I was at the time I was in a. Uh, I do feel quite passionate passionately about female abusers because so I'm so I'm uh, same sex attracted and uh, in my experience women women many of the time have not been the gentler sex. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, of course, uh, yeah. And um, I was in nowhere near to, you know, the, these poor women, but I was in um, an emotionally abusive relationship with a woman and I had read Caroline's book. I think it was called The One the Girl Who Got Away, The One Who Got Away. Yeah. And I was just quite interested in, you know, again, this, this mother-type figure, how she could do these awful things to to another woman. I mean, abuse is bad whether it's from a, a female to a man to a, from, it's genderless, but it was just interesting to these, you know, female yeah. to female abuse. So, um, yeah, I, I just, um, I think I mess I emailed her agent, the agent, of, and then she put me in contact with Caroline and we, we'd, you know, had a few, a few emails, right. going, but it was, um, but she just seemed so gentle and so, yeah, gentle and forgiving and playful. She was quite funny as well, you know. Yeah. Um, but it's... Um, did you say anything else about what happened to her? She didn't seem to want... To, no, she 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 wanted to emphasise a lot on... Much of her healing was, was looking into the lives of Fred and Rose that they'd had. I mean, Fred was made to have sex with his mother at the age of 12... Yeah. Um, taught how to have sex with animals, you know, Rose was, I think, yeah, um, sexually abused by her father, uncle, and so they, they just couldn't escape abuse, both of these yeah, kids. Of and I think Caroline sort of, you know, came to the conclusion, well, if, if that's all you've been taught, you may not actually know what's normality. Yeah. Um, and um, But she would, possibly for legal reasons, she would just mention them initial them so it would be if she'd be speaking about rose it'll be rw or fw um i, I always yeah, felt yeah. there was a reason she had to do that uh so um but yeah it was very uh, that's insane though isn't it and also that that is part of um i think we both wanted to write to her but just because um you just want to understand like is she is Rose like a pure monster or is she a victim herself? And I think it's probably, yeah. you know, it's a bit of both, isn't it? She was a vic victim and became a monster because of it, didn't she? But I don't I don't really know. It's something I'd really like to speak to her about, but... Yeah. We're not going to do. I think you're right. No, I, th I think you're spot on there. I, th I think it's... um. The, the, abu the abused can become the abuser yeah. or they can recognise they've been abused and seek help or become a better person for it and yeah. I suppose if you don't know that there's that you should be taking other roads you can just sort of slip into that yeah um, especially if you meet someone like Fred as well who similar as you said before similar car crash of a background and just these two two chaotic worlds just colliding and then just creates an app like it's all it sounds bad but it's like a perfect storm isn't it for all this stuff to brew yeah it, yes, it is, isn't it? Yeah, it's, um, terrifying. 
no good can come. I wonder, what do you make of... Do you think people can be completely devoid of conscience? Or do you think that there's always... It, it can be, like with your experience of the, the people you write to, what, what do you feel about that? Do you think so? Um, yeah, um, I, think, I think so. Um, so I write to a guy called Stephen Port, um, and actually he's got a few similarities what we've been talking about in terms of um, the police not believing so, you know, with Caroline being seen as a party girl. Mm. This guy got away with his murders because he, he was he was, a, he was he was gay and he was killing young gay men. Oh, but, okay. um, they were found, he used to like, oh, make an overdose with drugs. And um, because these young gay men were found uh, OD'd, the police just assumed that that's what gay guys do. They go out, they party at people's houses and they overdose. And so he got away with it for so long because of that um, kind oh, of like, right. you know, uh, stereotyping. Yeah. Um, but he, after speaking to him, he's totally innocent in terms of his conscience. And he has oh. no um, no connection to it at all. And I believe that he believes that just from what he talks to and how he says it. Yeah, and um, it's weird when you're writing to what you think is a psychopath. But I mean, I'm pretty sure he is, or sociopath or something. Just because I don't know how he can live with himself like that, and almost, and almost he kind of portrays himself as he's a victim. He's, he shouldn't be in there. It's not his fault. Right. But he doesn't. What, what I find interesting is, is that Stephen doesn't. Um, he says he's innocent, and it's all like a big misunderstanding, and he's being uh, sort of persecuted by the police mm. and the media. Yet he doesn't say that he needs to be let out. So the part of him, there's part of him which knows he should be there. Yeah. But then there's part of him which doesn't connect to his guilt to the crimes. Wow. And I think that's quite interesting, how, how he deals with that. Yeah. But I do I do think there's people that don't feel that same emotion. I mean, I, for example, like, you know, <clears throat> this is a bit daft, but, you know, if I stand on a, on a snail, you know, I feel bad for quite a while, I feel really guilty and I try and, yeah. You know, put it somewhere and help it, and these people can do these heinous things and just carry on as normal as if nothing's happened. Yes, that's it, isn't it? It's yeah. yeah it blows my mind. Yeah. Well, so that, what, what do you what do you think? On it, by the way, do you think that these people can do that? I don't like, know. Sort of not is... uh, not have a conscience on doing these crimes. Yeah, I don't know what to think. I um. It's hard. It's difficult, isn't it, to try and put yourself in someone else's shoes who yeah. is very different. Um, I wonder if it's sort of it can be deeply buried, or or maybe it's that they do know deep down, but it's almost like a protect protective mechanism. If you switch off from it, um, I mean, I know Caroline felt one of one of the worst things was that Rose in when it went to trial, she was hearing all these horrific things that she'd done back to her and she just didn't flinch yeah and but then i suppose at that point maybe it was the fear of oh my goodness i'm gonna have to spend the rest of the, the, the whole concentration of me 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 because they're me people anyway <laughs> yeah. you know i'm gonna have to spend the rest of my life in prison um you know so it could i don't i don't know i mean it's yeah really like feel you feel sorry when it's themselves that are gonna take the uh punishment basically yeah. Both for themselves. And like these sort of, you know, to catch a predator clips, a lot of it is, I'm really sorry, I'm really sorry, I'm really sorry, but they're saying sorry because they don't want to be caught. They're not feed that if they were that sorry, they wouldn't be doing it in the first place. Yeah, yeah, they're sorry to be caught, are they? It's, um, yeah. Self-preservation, isn't it? That's what a lot of them do, self-preservation. They just want them to be okay. Yes, yeah. And you think that's not really... Yeah, that's not genuine remorse, is it? Yeah, it's kind of, of not. Um, but um, yeah, so I don't, it's very interesting, isn't it? Because one thing I was thinking of the other day, we we see these photos of of criminals who were caught sort of at the time, and that's the last photo we see. And I was thinking about Rose, and I think, crumb, she wouldn't look like that now because she would be what sixty in her sixties. Yeah. And we still see these images of, like, Sutcliffe. Um, you know, he's this uh, dark-haired, quite handsome man with this beard, and you think, he wouldn't look like that now. Yeah. <laughs> they kind of immortalised, aren't they, as those 
or at least in the UK anyway, because we, we're a lot more secretive over here as opposed to like America. They, okay. They, they have, um, they get photos all the time. They get, I think they have like at least mandatory kind of mug shots every year or so or every couple of years. Oh, right. Okay. That's they, interesting. They, but in our country, like I said before, they just want to block them away and then it's done. You never see them again. Yeah. Yes. That's true. Yes, that is interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And again, I wonder what the reason is for that, because it's not as if we can get at them or... No. Um, that's, that's kind of an interesting... There's something in the American culture which um, has more, like... Obviously, like, you know, true crime cells, and uh, a lot of people are interested in that kind of stuff. And in, But in America, they kind of gave birth to that thing, so maybe they're just, you know, the same as everything else, more extreme on everything, and so... Because mm. even if they had to get these mug shots, I'm sure they get mug shots here, but they don't need to, you know, give it to the public, if you know what I mean. It's like ready, mm. readily available knowledge. Yeah. Same as all their addresses in America. They're all, all you can just like Google search any prisoner's address, whereas in this country, you have to jump through lots of hoops and get permissions and stuff like You can't just look up someone's address. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I just find That's that interesting, different. just like the two kind of, um, you know, ways of dealing with these things. Yeah. Well, that is, yeah, that is interesting. There's a big difference yeah. in there. It's kind of, uh, yeah, but it's, uh, I like to think there is some, you can never get justice because it's, it's all, you know, these things have happened, but I like to think that deep down within their hearts there is some sort of, I don't know, even if it's an unconfessed remorse, that would be nice, yeah. wouldn't it? It would, um, you know, sort of make you feel better about a. Yeah, it's yeah, just because. <laughs> uh, hopefully, but it's just because of the people we are. And I just think, um, me personally, I just think some people are just like that and just, just, just to be able to do what they've done. Some of them, you know what I mean? I don't, feel, I don't think they ever feel it. And I don't, I don't think they ever could feel it. Because you could do what you did. No. But I know, That's... I know what you mean. It would be nice to know and just think. And maybe there is some kind of element to it, but it wouldn't be how we would do it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, just because um, that's what makes it worse, isn't it? If there's, if you just think they're just these sort of just like pure. Uh, that's just like primal. It's like a primal instinct, isn't it? It's just like like you know, we're like more civilized and doesn't do that kind of thing, and just um, you know, there's something about them which is more primal. Which mm. is scary. Yeah, just murdering machines rather than uh, yeah, yeah, but it's. Yeah, a lot of it is is looking into the the psychology of it, isn't it? I mean, like with the in um, reading this this book of uh, May's the daughter, strange things that that Rose would do, like you know, what watching cartoons naked and you know, <laughs> you don't things that a mother wouldn't really do in front of the kids or. Um, and then try and close on in the shop. I don't know if you've heard the thing about her trying clothes on in the shop where she would just strip and not go into a changing room. And, and you think that the mind that would do that, they're clearly not of sound mind. I mean, there's a big difference yeah. between doing these things and going out and killing someone. But yeah. I guess it's sort of helpful to think, right, a, a, the sort of mind that would not realise you've got to go into a changing room to try on clothes. <laughs> you just yeah, well, it's so it's so small <laughs> things though. When you add them up, they became they become like a, a big thing, don't they? Cause it shows like how detached from uh, kind of like society, social norms they are, isn't it? It shows how detached they are. They're not they're not the same as us. Yeah. Because yeah. any normal person obviously wouldn't be sat there watching. Say normal, what is normal? But you know, you know what I mean. Like, yeah. like of, of sound mind, yes. wouldn't be sat there watching cartoons naked in front of the children. You know what I mean? For a children to see, like you wouldn't want to see. No, it's you, you wouldn't. You, a kid wouldn't want to see their parent naked, and vice versa. Do you know what I mean? It's just the way it is. Yeah, but they just don't yes. have that connection. No, and again, it comes back down to the if that's all she's, if that's all her and yeah. Fred knew of. You know, it's it's just been handed down, hasn't it? That this is, of course, this is yeah. how And it's are. also interesting how, like, um, there's nothing on. Well, for me personally, I don't know. You maybe you do know, but um, there's nothing. I don't know anything about their parents because both both Rose uh, and Freddie say were abused, but um, 
you know, where, like, why can we don't know a bit more about where they, where that came from? Because that's like a, it's like it's like almost like passed down from generation to generation, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I think there was a a, a lot of mental illness on the parents of both Rose and Fred um, yeah. that sort of resulted in interesting behaviour and yeah. le- learned behaviour, I think, which is, you know, very, very unfortunate. But, um, yeah, it's terrible. Oh, oh, Mike, it's been up this, this hour has flown. It's been lovely to have you on and... Um, yeah, no worries. Thank you very much. Have a chat. Thank you for. What I do. I do think it's important what you're doing because it's raising. It's raising awareness and it's interesting. We are interested in. Yeah, you know, we cut, we're not in in support of what these um, serial killers are doing, but it's it's interesting to bring the awareness around, isn't it? That this. Yeah, like I just like to. Um, I just like to kind of add like a new element element to it, just like from the horse's mouth trying to understand because you get many people many people are watching these documentaries and kind of thinking that they're um, they know everything about these people and the psychology and stuff but it's all been edited by someone else that's either glorifying or sensationalising the story or undertelling certain parts because you know we've got stuff by Todd Colhead where he said like none of it is in the media this part and it adds a whole new dimension to the story and I like, just want to get like a more fuller picture if you know what I mean that's what I want to try and create yeah, you do a great job of that. I think it's um, it's Thank interesting. You you've got a, appreciate it. You've got a huge following as well, which is um, and you do live, you do live shows, don't you? Yeah, I do live shows as well, where we just uh, talk in the live chats and stuff about yeah different people and just different cases and stuff. Yeah, brilliant. Oh, that's good stuff. No, I think it's um, yeah, spot. And we'll have. Is it okay to have the um, link to your channel on the home page. Oh yeah, of course. Cool. So. Yeah, Any, anyone who's listening, check it out. Uh, Bizarre Bazaar. I'll just type in Bizarre Bazaar on YouTube, and you'll find it straight away. But yeah, yeah feel free to come oh. join in. Oh, that's lovely. Thank you so much. That's good stuff. Yes, I've I've sus- subscribed recently, so I'm. Um, Thank you, <laughs> I like to keep Appreciate in, it. In contact with uh, what's what's going on. Great. Cool. Oh, great. And to the audience, thank you for tuning in. And until next time, much love and God bless.